fast forward 10 years, you're in your mid 40s. and We're you're... going to be a sports broadcaster on, uh, on, on national television. Okay. I'll, I'll settle down and I'll be like Baltimore Orioles versus the Red Sox. I'll be fat. I'll have a fucking beer belly. I'll be like, again, bottom of the night, two down. I used to talk about hookers and blow, and now I'm here in the, uh, you know, in the booth at 50 years old. That's you know, my retirement plan. Go work as a national broadcaster. That's perfect. Making history today on 2000% Raise. First time ever we're doing a live in-studio production, and anyone that watches my Instagram might recognize the studio. It is not a replica of my condo in L.A. It is my condo in L.A. It is. And uh, who better to have as my first guest? Well, I actually own the place now. <laughs> Bob. Uh, I, I've if, taken over, John. If, if you've been paying attention, Bob has. Uh, you ever seen that movie with Bill Murray? What about Bob? Yeah, yeah. Where he just kind of doesn't leave. And <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I told John, I said, John, I said, I'm coming to L.A. I said, I fucking hate Los Angeles. I said, there's nothing about Los Angeles that I like. John and I have been working on some projects when we first met. I took a liking to John. John's been a mentor of mine. It offered me a bunch of advice and different stuff in different categories and whatnot. If I've listened, I don't know. But Well, and let's talk about that, Bob. I didn't really know this, and I, I, I found it out more from my followers that knew of you very well we're also following you far before me probably and they were kind of sharing with me the shit you were going through now me and you started hanging out we started talking i didn't really realize the transition you were going through man with with being part of full sun podcast and all that shit and everything that was going on. i know that's old news now but when we started hanging out you were in the middle of that shit and i had no fucking idea i yeah. just thought of you as the the fucking funny dude with the fucking voiceovers of aaron Rodgers and shit i didn't really realize you had anything to do with that podcast yeah no we we we, we were very involved in that podcast and like i said it is like like you said it's over talked about now at this point it's basically yeah. the point where it's out of my hands and whatnot right um you, know, you gotta go through the whole mediation process you have to go through all that shit and then you gotta decide if you want to press the red nuclear button or not yeah, which I've never done before in my life. Did you press it? You're going it's to? It's like this. See my finger? On this episode, Bob will be pressing the button. <laughs> I mean, with you here, probably, I don't know. I don't know if I if I, if it will build up enough. It's like uh, Matthew Broderick and War Games, <laughs> uh, global nuclear war. Are you a big movie guy? A lot of movie references. I'm good. I'm a big, big fucking movie guy. I'm actually, I like, I, what I told John, because John is, like I said, venture capital, very successful, has a lot of different businesses, and it's his show. But I have a tendency to obviously kind of just take over and host sometimes, which I got to get better at. <laughs> but, uh, you know, with, with John and I kind of got in business together is John kind of was like, hey, man, you know how to do this social thing. And I'm like, well, hey, man, you know how to do this business thing. And that's how we kind of all how we me and you looped looped together. And so I, what I think for you is what I fucking hate, John, more than ever yeah. is watching Zoom podcasts. <laughs> I can't stand them. So, so, so the reason Bob agreed to do this episode with me, if uh, if you saw a few episodes ago, I had I have had about, about eh, probably about ten episodes ago now at this point. But uh, yeah, he he wasn't a fan of the Riverside app, even though I promote it more on audio. Mm -hmm. Listen, here's the deal: Bob. if you go straight to audio, it's fine. I have six figures of viewers or, or excuse me, followers now on Instagram. I'm up there on TikTok. My YouTube is weak. I need help with my YouTube channel, and maybe this will help it out. This is the thing, too. You know what's funny? I'm not even that strong on YouTube, so I'm on Rumble. Okay. So I did an exclusive deal with Rumble. Yep. I, I believe that the whole – I was always afraid on YouTube. YouTube yeah. is very like – you could be working so hard. You look at Steve Will Do It, my buddy, mm -hmm. right? And he's a little bit aggressive with his content. Yep. It, YouTube, basically, they can just turn the lights off at any time. Really? He built it up to 5.5 million followers. Steve Will Do It. And then out of the blue, they just didn't like what he did, and they go – Poof. They said forget it. Out of all the views they brought him, they just turned it off. Wow. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to be a part of a site that, and Rumble's just kind of in the beginning stages, right? Yeah. But I was like, fuck it. I want to be in somewhere where I don't have to worry about that. I don't have the anxiety where I can say whatever the fuck I want. But I'm, you know what? If I upload it, there's a chance that maybe I might yeah. get fucking taken down. You yeah. know what I mean? So that's why I go to Rumble. So when people want to watch on Rumble, Bob, are they, do they have to download the app or you just go to the website? They got to go to the app. They got to go on the website, do all the registration and shit like that. And you know what the, the mis biggest misconception mm -hmm. of Rumble is? Is that it swings very far right. Okay. Which, and it's, it looks like that, I think. And I think that, you know, when I worked with Chris, the CEO, I think that, you know, one of the reasons why I came on is a lot of the stuff that 
companies kind of that I work with and they bring me on, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not just like a talent, I guess. Right. I like to help behind the scenes. Yeah. That's what I really love to do. I love yeah. to like, I like doing like the agent shit, bridging people together, merging people together. That's what I'm very right. good at. Right. And I was like, you know what? Let's balance this out a little bit. Yeah. You yeah. swing too far, right? You're going to lose half your audience. Well, hey, and everyone, listen, man, you, you, everyone's getting a taste right now. I've gotten a lot. John, of bring that mic a little closer to your face. There you go. I've gotten a lot of questions from people on like, you know, hey, with my brand and what I'm trying to do, is Bob the right guy for me to be fucking with? Because you see him out there kind of going crazy, posting crazy things on his story and stuff. And what you're seeing right now, you already saw it. I was going to introduce this the second half of the episode. You're already seeing this other side of Bob Monterey, which is a pretty fucking smart business guy. He's referring me to me as a mentor. I'll tell you what, I haven't mentored him on shit. He's smart enough to hang around with smart business people. That's one of the things I learned about him. Well, no, no, no. It's not that you haven't mentored me shit. It's just I follow your... Mm -hmm. You haven't directly mentored me. Right. Like that. I mean, you have face-to-face, -face, but mm -hmm. also through your content, as much as you may come across as this egotistical douchebag at times. <laughs> and, I, I, <laughs> no, no, no. For, I mean, first, the girl on Below Deck called me a douchebag, not Bob Mannery. Did I, I, I didn't, I didn't call when, you a douchebag. When bag. more than one person says it, it must no, be fucking true. No but, what, no, but what I love about it is that you're yourself and that you have both sides to that. Like, mm -hmm. I saw the thing you just posted about the anxiety on the flight. Right. And you weren't afraid to share that. And right. that, that, that's that's a real thing. And I think that's what the internet lacks sometimes is, you know, and mm -hmm. what I try and always do is just be completely as real as possible. And, like, because people relate to that. Other yeah. people get anxiety on airplanes. Yeah. Other, and there's not a lot of people that are out there in the public eye that are willing to talk about that. Yep. Hey, man, you just brought up Instagram. Let me ask you something. I, and I really want your opinion on this. Is, is shadow banning on Instagram a real fucking thing? One thousand percent. I have I have a very close friend of mine is Adam Mosessory. Okay. And he's a very good ally to have because he is the CEO of Instagram. Okay. And so whenever I get shadow banned, I always go to Adam. Adam must think I'm the most annoying fucking guy ever on the planet. Yeah. Because I will bang out Adam and be like, Adam, I can't go live, man. Yeah. What's going on? Can you fix this? He's yeah. like, I'm dealing with Instagram, bro. Yeah. Like not Bob Menery's page. Bob yeah. Menery's page does not matter to us. You know what I mean? So Adam's been a, a, a good help, but shadow banning is real. Um, I mean, there's times where I will, you know, randomly one day mm -hmm. just not be able to go live. Yeah. And then there's uh, times where I will randomly click my stories and my view counts down 90%. Same. Yep. And yep. and it is real. And to look at why that happens, that's the other thing. It's like why I go to Rumble. I don't yeah. fucking know why. Yeah. You yeah. know? I had it happen to me two weeks ago, and I couldn't tell if it was just actually a shadow ban or if the, just the reels I posted that day happened to fucking suck. Well, that's that's the other thing, too. That's the other thing, too. When I put it out there, I'm always like, yeah, I'm shadow ban. Yeah. Guys like, no, nah, Bob, you just are you're producing shit that right now. very funny, sir. Yeah, you're just not good at what you do right now. So one of the things people say to me on my reels sometimes, like the hater kind of fuck with you kind of comments thing, someone will put something about like, do you look like you're on steroids and cocaine or something? And I screenshotted one once and put it on my fucking story and took like a poll. Do I look more like I'm on cocaine or more on steroids? Mm -hmm. The next fucking day, I had like no views on any of my shit. So yeah. somebody was saying it's probably because you made the drug reference. Yep. Instagram now has you banned. I think a thousand percent. I think that happens. I think with like smaller accounts, I'm not yeah. saying you're a smaller account, but I'm saying that like there are bigger accounts they yeah. monitor more than others. Right. And so I think they protect certain accounts more. I think it's also too. If just they don't, the algorithm will just see. Okay, listen, you and your hundred thousand viewers. Okay, no, 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 you're off for two days. I think if you're in the beginning stages of building, it is especially if you're using those platforms. Yeah. I think it does make sense to steer a little in the uh, more conservative, you yeah, know, content yeah. opposed to just going hyper aggressive because you know they do they do definitely trigger those things, which sucks. Yeah. Which which, sucks. which brings us back to Rumble though. Okay, let's go full circle on this conversation. Let's I want to get you on Rumble. Yeah. Okay. So listen, Bob, how how, how does a Bob Mannery, well you specifically, but a Bob Mannery too, I suppose, end up making a deal with Rumble when everyone's on fucking YouTube? Do they reach out to you? Great comment. No, I was very aggressive. So basically after the full send podcast departed that the departure happened i um, and not everybody knows this by the way so so the nelk boys were youtube guys that brought bob in and they did this full send podcast my kids used to follow nelk full send big fucking thing anyway we don't have to talk about that anymore but that's what he's referring to he's always brought up so it doesn't matter to me but um at the end of the day yeah they're i mean by the way nelk and all them are geniuses on youtube kyle's mm -hmm. a genius as much as we had a little bad blood right now and whatnot mm -hmm. i'll never knock somebody for being amazing what they do yeah they're fucking geniuses what they do they built an amazing amazing following they crush it on YouTube and whatnot. Um, but, you know, the, the way the deal with Rumble happened was... You refer to Steve Will Do It as your buddy. Isn't he part of... Isn't he with those guys? Yeah, so that's the big misconception is like when I say, fuck, you know, Nelk or whatever like that. Yeah. It's not fuck Nelk. I love Celine. Okay. I love Steve. Uh, my, my, my issue is with Kyle, 
John okay. and Sammy. Got the it. guys that pulled the trigger um, with the with the shit. And yeah. and it was only based on just around a couple little things that, you know, were just money wise that you know how it is. It's like yep. when business gets big, money starts coming in big money. People start to get a little pissed off. My my main thing was just the respect thing. I was a little disappointed about that thing they did with the UFC. Yeah. You know, lie they told that hurt me because I was always like, I told them, I was like, guys, I know you're pranksters. I know you like do shit for content. Just don't fuck with me. Yeah. Let me show up. Yeah. Let me just do my job. They made let me, same let me help you be a little mainstream. Let me bring you to some things. Like, let me get you on ESPN like I did with, the, you know, right. with, with getting Jimmy Pitaro, president of ESPN, and mm -hmm. all those guys and hitting them, Adam Schefter, and getting that Antonio Brown featured on Sports Center. Like, yep. I'm good at that. Yep. But just don't fuck with me. And then when they crossed that line, that's when I was just kind of mm. like, come on, guys. Like, I, I asked you not to fucking fuck with me. Yeah. And it did fuck with me. Yeah. Um, but the Rumble deal, I basically just reached out. I said, look, I saw that Steve is, is on Rumble. And I said, I think I can really help you guys. Okay. I think I said, Chris, I think, you know, I think you guys are really right. I said, yeah. which is fine. But I said, yeah. like, you're, you're, the reason I think why there's not a lot of main, cre like, you know, content creators on there that are, you know, whatever. It's, they're a little afraid to touch you probably. Right. Because with the way politics just cancels everybody nowadays. Yep. If everything swings right and how hated, I guess, Trump is and right. all that shit by, you know. That I, I thought I could balance it out a little bit, you know yeah. what I mean, and so that was one of the things. And on top of, I had a very successful show and whatnot. And their uh, Rumble is publicly traded now. That company too, I believe. Right? Rumble is publicly yeah. traded. I think it's at like ten ten right now. Yeah, so they have to. They can't just stay conservative and stay right. They need to open up the. They need to open yeah. up a little bit too. And that, and then I think that you know Chris is Chris is at, was in tech. I think he's built a lot of different crazy great businesses, and um, but they're just they're just small. They're a startup. Steve was a huge help for them. Mm -hmm. um but yeah i have no problem with steve will do it steve's one of the greatest guys he's actually done a lot for me mm -hmm. and and a couple of my buddies too and just really helped um but he's he's a wild fucking yeah. man i mean th th that's why the he gets the engagement he, he brought so much fucking numbers to rumble it's fucking insane some very close people to me live in the same building as him i won't say what city and uh they see him from time to time and uh they know i'm friends with I, you i've seen him give away yeah. some of the like cameras off yeah, I've seen him give away to just a lady on the street like really? ten, 10 grand. Okay, like because everybody thinks it's all like fake and shit. Like Steve is one of the most a generous good dude. guys. Dude, good dude, Steve did me a favor once for something that was above and beyond. Okay, I, that guy's got my fuck. I got his back for fucking life. Okay, and it sucks because Steve's kind of in the middle of you know because when you're you have drama with mm -hmm. Kyle or whatever, mm -hmm. it sucks because he's a part of Happy Dad. He's a part of the thing. So it's like me now, me right. and him have to kind of stay at a distance. Yeah. So I lose some friends and I lost a lot of friends. Yep. Because when you go to battle with an empire that big, yeah, there's going to be people that either choose this side or choose that side. Now I'm yep. a one man show. Yeah, they're a fucking real business. Yeah, but I also didn't mind. I don't care about building like a fucking mm -hmm. massive business. I'm I'm satisfied with just being a talent. Did they ever go like corporate ish though? They never really did that, right? Like you, you ever heard of, you know Phase Clan? I'm assuming, right? Yeah, I think and, they have. And they got like structured like Phase Clan. I think they, yeah, they no. are. John Shahidi came in. John, I okay. Fuck fucking john i hate talking good about him yeah. but john john's done a great job building that up as well and uh, john kind of came in and um who's president of full send kyle brought him in and he's done a great job with that okay and they were able to maintain the right the yeah, culture I mean, happy dad is, fun happy dad is a monster which was one of our big things that we you know that i was told i was a part of that ended up kind of <laughs> wasn't that's why everybody comes in they're like when i see happy dads at a bar i'm like you motherfuckers <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And you know, you know how big of an alcoholic I am. Yeah. I, I, there was, there was. I had a podcast the other day. There was one drink option. Yeah. It was only Happy Dads in the fridge or water, and I was like, "Fuck it, oh. give me a Happy Dad, right?" <laughs> you know what I mean? I guess. But no, those guys, those guys did a good job. It was just the yeah. respect thing, and they owe me a little bit of money. So hopefully, we'll figure it out. Yeah, hopefully, you guys figure that out. I mean, they're, you know, it's, I, I like what you're saying about them right now. And here's the thing about you, Bob. You're, you're a pro people see you as this wild man on social media, right? And. You're a perfectionist, though, man. We, uh, I flew out to Boston once to co-host a fucking show with Bob. He had these kids on. That oh, this got, is... These kids got mauled by a bear. These, <laughs> these, it was a great story. Look it up. Bob's promoting it all week. So the bear kids are in town. We do this whole podcast for four hours. It's big production. Bob didn't like how it turned out at the end of the fucking day. And, and there was a lot of time and work put into that. The, just think the content wasn't exactly how we wanted it. We ain't putting it on. Yeah. And I'm like, that's when I learned that I got this glimpse of fucking Bob that he comes across as this loose cannon that doesn't give a fuck. But when it comes to like business and his image and what he's trying to put out there, it, it is thought out. Even though at three in the morning he might post a story in the dark talking to himself. But besides besides that. Yeah. I mean, dude, I, I, I definitely have some serious yeah. like, fucked up things in my head. I yep. think I definitely have some like, but I think the reason is because I had a really hard year. 
Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, you look at prior to Full Send, I had built a massive show. You want to talk about numbers? Like, I mean, we had beaten on my first podcast, which is Ripper Magoo. I beat ESPN. I beat Pardon My Take. I was up there with Pardon My Take mm. 1 and 2. It was just us two going back and forth. Yep. Getting a half million downloads on Spotify every single episode. Every single episode with a cell phone. Now, I don't have an empire behind me pushing this. I don't have a bar stool, 17,000, uh, 1,700 fucking employees pushing it, fucking whatever the fuck they have. Right. I was myself. I was doing yeah. a cell phone. We, we bit th built that. So I knew I always had the talent. And I, my thing is I just, my head spins too much yeah. if I'm not working. Right. My head like to spins too it. much if I'm not working. And then obviously you throw in like, I have an addictive personality. Yeah. I right. had some toxic relationships. Mm -hmm. I had, and so like, you know, I'm just like everybody else, man. That's the thing. 99% of this, everybody goes through yeah. exactly what I describe yeah. on the internet. And I think that why I put everything out there is because people, the response that I get that people don't see right. is so amazing because people tell me their fucking problems. Yeah. And I fucking sit there and I fucking talk it through with them. Yeah. They're fucking assholes and shit. I block people now. People relate. Well, people relate to you, man. And they, they feel, I mean, they're watching your Instagram stories all day. They feel like they're getting to know you and shit, man. I mean, it's, it's just, I think that's, I think it's, and that's what I do. I'm really, really engaging. And when I was building my, when I built this from just one follower to wherever mm -hmm. I'm at now, 9 million everywhere and all that yeah. shit. When I was building this shit, I made sure that anybody that fucking said anything nice about me or was, mm. I fucking would make sure I would take the time out of my day to fucking talk to them. Yeah. Because it's so important, I think, right. to connect with your the audience. Engagement. Yep. So listen, let's talk about business a little bit here. And, and not, not just no, the Bob Mattery. This is where we struggle. <laughs> the, well, the business part of, all right, so Bob is this guy that's out there. Everyone sees you out there on social media. And when you, when you get these smaller social media guys or, or the podcasters, for instance, a lot of people are putting out podcasts to promote their business. They have some bad of business podcast because they want to sell you life insurance or whatever, like the little guys, right? Mm -hmm. At what point does your social media get so big that now we're not going to do a podcast to promote my business or social media? We're going to try to get fucking big to make this podcast fucking big. You know what I mean? So, like, like, so re-explain re the question yeah, yeah. a little better. So are you saying that... Explain the question one more time. So I think that we all want followers we all want the attention everybody wants that shit on fucking instagram and a lot of people will transition and start doing a podcast and at the end of the day maybe maybe they're involved in real estate or they're trying to promote themselves as an insurance person or, or whatever mm -hmm. then there's like a a line you cross and it's like no wait all this other shit we're doing now is actually to promote the podcast and i'm going to make money getting brand deals and shit like that on the podcast mm -hmm. and i think and yeah. i think every podcaster wants to be the next fucking joe rogan right but but like how many people actually get to that category like, like what you're doing with ripper magoo i'm assuming you're monetizing it yeah not even really as much right now i am monetizing okay. at times but yeah but back to your thing is this i think that yeah. it's such an oversaturated market right now yep i think that you had to get in at the right time yep um how many podcasts are in the fucking world right now like over three trillions million. right yeah. mm -hmm. and to you know have what i had originally when i built yeah because a lot of people are like oh full send had you built like bro i yeah. fucking had massive numbers right. prior to that my problem was where i fucked up a little bit mm -hmm. which i'm gonna fix yeah is my first show was booming yeah then i stopped okay back to my consistency problem and then when i stopped i realized i needed some help yeah. And I did a little younger audience, matched up with Nelk. They came in. I had, they, they, they were opening up a huge seltzer. I had that 21 to 35 year old demo. It made sense for me. I needed your younger audience. Yep. We both had a big following. That's what we combined. Then that fell off. Yeah. And how long did that relationship last for? The relationship was the, w for like three years, but our yep. business together was about a year. Okay. So, so you were friends with them for a couple of years before you prior, guys. Prior, me and Kyle had talked about. I actually pushed Kyle to do a podcast. I, yeah. That that was the thing that you know we had talked about. I said, Kyle, we gotta, we got I'm good at this shit. Mm -hmm. You know, we got We got You got a massive audience. We just go a podcast. It's gonna be fucking huge. Yeah. And then he's like, Well, we're a little bit worried, Sammy and John. You're kind of a loose cannon and all that <laughs> shit. I mean, look at how it look how it ended up working out. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I think that was him just kind of negotiating my numbers down and all yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but, but all you guys were like, the, the, the prop was just you guys with each other personally, right? You didn't do, ever do anything to hurt their brand or would they allege that you did? This is the crazy, I mean, the only thing I did to hurt their brand that they can say mm -hmm. is going on the internet and saying, fuck you, you owe me money, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. So that was after the fact? That was after the fact. Okay. What I did and what they, mm -hmm. what, what Kyle said once, what they tried to say mm -hmm. was that 
well, Bob's all fucked up, uh, Adderall and all that shit, mm. which I'm not going to lie. Like, yeah, mm. I had not. a I always showed up. Right. And I always got the fucking guests there. Yeah. I was always the one that was texting the most saying, guys, let's fucking go. Ukraine just invaded Russia. Right. Fucking Antonio Brown just took his fucking shirt off. Yeah. Uh, fucking Afghanistan just fell. Like, we let's, you know, I was always the one that. It was at they, the point where I was pushing. I was always showing up. Why I never do they did, care if you were on Adderall? Like, why do they care? They didn't. That was just an excuse they used because they needed something to fucking say. Gotcha. To, when I went nuclear, they needed to yeah. find something. There was nothing I did yeah. throughout that whole entire relationship right. with them. Yeah. I, I really can't think of anything I did in that relationship that ever was yeah. wrong. Yep. I missed one podcast because, A, it was dangerous. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yep. And, B... Was there was one podcast? I will admit this. There was one podcast I missed mm -hmm. because I was fucked up, and it was because of the night before. So there's a there's a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, and one of the one of the chapters is is talks about appealing to a nobler cause. In this age of social media, I see people using that. They inherently use that to win arguments, but they'll use it in a negative way. So it, so it should be like. Hey Bob, let's uh, let's go do this because we're gonna raise money for the kids, and that's like the nobler cause. But they'll do it to win an argument to take you down instead. And the first place people fucking go in those situations is drugs because they know oh drugs or or if you say something like racist, racist or drugs, you feel it? Oh well, fucking can't be around that guy. Yeah, I mean, you know? I mean, I think that first and foremost is Adderall is a when Kyle blamed the Adderall thing, um, it was just irrelevant. Like I never showed up. It was like. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, it was, and also, too, look at our brand. It's the optics. We're party animals. Yep. Like, that was our fucking brand to right. show up a little hungover, to be baked with Mike Tyson. Right. And be high and blitzed out of our fucking mind. Yep. Like, that was our brand. Yeah. Um. So, you know, to say that, did I ever struggle with Adderall addiction mm -hmm. and stuff like that? Absolutely, I did. Yeah. It never once affected my work ethic once. Yeah. It only made me hyper-focused. What it did affect was probably my health mm -hmm. a little bit. And um, maybe just my attention to certain relationships because i'd be mm -hmm. so hyper focused on work yep but when i take an adderall which i don't really do at all anymore i really mm -hmm. don't i just can't i had to kind of get off that right because it's just i mean i i think i had one two days ago just because i really wanted to fucking focus on this shit but it's not right. like you know i learned i learned from it that's just it's not they used to give that shit you know yeah you know where adderall was originally derived from mm -mm. Uh, i think it was nazi germany Really? They used to give it to the pilots to keep them awake so they could fly planes on the Really? Yeah. Uh, Isn't that fucking that. funny? That is kind of funny. So I could go and fly a fucking plane right now if you fucking yeah. get, you know, give me the keys. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, yeah, so no, basically that's 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 what it is. And that, that you're right. They they mm -hmm. that's where they go. They that's the only play they really had. Mm -hmm. And um I mean just hopefully it all gets resolved. I but hate listen, losing. Listen, here's the thing about all this shit, man. And, and you know, you're you're so like well respected people know let, let me just tell you guys something all right me and bob hung out a number of times now i'm in boston with this dude and it's like hey we got to go meet this guy for lunch you go what do you mean bob what do you where, where we've got to get out of there now he's meeting us now who get there it's fucking tyreek hill there's yeah. no business associated with it we're literally having freaking beers in a bar having a burger with him and tyreek was in town for uh He's a video video, game. video gaming guy, and there's some gaming convention. He's building this platform or something. He happened to be in Boston. Him and Pop Cross Pass. We were in Boston. Let's go beat Tyreek Hill for lunch. I mean, dude, that's that's fucking respect, dude. And I heard Tyreek more than one time invite you to come down to Florida to join him on his fucking boat for a fishing trip one time. I mean, you know, bro, sometime. I'm just because I I mean I think the reason why, and that's why I think there is a misconception out there about me. Am I fucked mm -hmm. up at times and crazy and whatnot? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have I had times where I've burned people not really that much yeah uh, i mean i think if you hear something about me that i fuck somebody over there's not that many times you'll hear it because i'll always make sure i'll never just fuck somebody over and then yeah. like forget about it yeah i'll make it right but you might have to wait a couple little like let me figure it out i got a lot of shit going on you know what i mean <laughs> like i mean it's like somebody who sends me like you know some guy's like hey i need you to make a custom video for my uh kid yeah and like whatever and he's like rich as fuck because whenever i do those custom videos right i just base it on like if you're a school teacher i'll do it for 20 bucks yeah if you're fucking rich fuck you you're paying me two grand <laughs> you know what i mean so well, but then they'll they'll do it they'll pay me they'll be like three weeks later they'll be like bob where the where, where the fuck is the video i'm like bro my bad i forgot i got you like i'm sorry and all that i mean that's that's kind of me i'm a little disheveled and whatnot but i'll never fucking ever not 
so, do something. So a guy, so you just you just reminded me, man. So a guy I played football with at, at the University of Notre Dame, he was the number one draft pick for the New York Giants uh, back in like 2000. Lu- Luke Pettigal played, uh, started a tackle for the Giants. Back oh, when, I remember the Pettigal. You're going to go here? Yeah, with <laughs> exactly. It was back when uh, the Giants were uh, Eli Manning years and all that shit anyway. And, uh, John's the only guy who will try and make me, who will bury me on this thing. So, so go, so fucking go well, on. Bob John. was just saying how he doesn't fuck anyone over. I so, did it. By the way, so, at the end so, of the story, I will defend myself. <laughs> I never fuck over Pentagon. <laughs> Pentagon, you just had to wait. <laughs> Pentagon's got his own fucking, uh, his own fucking. You're, you're going to read all these comments and just be like, Bob, fuck me here. Bob, fuck me here. Bob, fuck me here. Well, people are now uh, googling Luke Pentagon, and it's not not helping yeah. our cause here. But he, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Me and Luke stay in touch time to time. It's it's been years. I'm a very but, good debater, by the way, John. Yeah. You're not going to beat me on many of these things. So so Luke just happens to bring up, hey, so you're with Mentory on um you know social media and stuff. <laughs> just whatever you do, don't invest in a NASCAR car with them. What did you say? Too late. And, and Too I late? go, what the fuck? I just gave him money for a fucking NASCAR. He goes, did it ever happen? I go, no. There's been fucking an excuse every fucking week and. Mm-hmm. And Bob doesn't dodge my fucking calls. He takes the fucking calls. And I go, what did you... What, 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 what do I say when you so, call me? So Luke said a... you were supposed to put his fucking face on the fucking hood of a car. Incorrect. You had every fucking excuse in the book. The driver was sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah unfortunately, uh, our tire blew out. We had engine failure. No, I'll tell you, I'll tell you guys the truth. The, the yeah. Pedagow thing, what happened was so... Do you want to explain yeah. the NASCAR business? Yeah, and by the way, I just want to say one thing. Talk about me, friends, loyalty. Luke is a guy I played with at Notre Dame. We lost touch over... No, about fuck two Luke decades. For saying this. Fuck hey, listen, Luke. no, no listen, but I, but I, I will say this: me and Luke are good friends, or we're friends, and we've known each other for a long time. He's had his his share of some uh, issues, but uh, friends stand by each other. Can That's I have the fucking that. floor yet, John? You you, you can. can. You why don't we explain to them? By the way, the why, don't, why don't we not explain rest. to them? By the way, how the fucking NASCAR thing even works and how, what, how it happened. But but we'll just like what you do and how Perfect. you make money so, from it. So I, I get a call one day, right? Mm-hmm. I get a call one day from uh, I forget who it was, some guy, and they were basically like, "Hey, uh, do you want to put Ripper Magoo yeah. on the hood of a NASCAR? Uh, we want fifteen thousand dollars to put Ripper Magoo on the hood of a NASCAR." And I looked at it, I'm like, well, is it a main race? Am I racing against like Denny Hamlin and all the big racers? Am I going to be there? And they're like, uh, no, it's the Xfinity race. And I'm like, what's the Xfinity race? And they're like, well, it's the secondary race. Okay. It's like not the main one. It's the day before it, uh-huh. right? Don't be looking at me like that, John. I'll explain <laughs> this. So then uh, long story short, I said, well, fuck, what do you need the fucking 15 grand for? They're like, well, we got to pay the driver. We got to do the tires. We got to do all the, you know, we got we to make our, yeah. we got to make our quota. Yep. And I said, well, I don't really see a return. I, for the you know nobody right. really watches probably the Xfinity races. Okay. I turn on the TV watching what was it on Fox Sports? Not a yeah. lot of people were probably watching that. I didn't All see right. the return. Okay. So I said fuck it. I said what does it take then? Because you obviously have other advertisers around the car. I said what does it take? What if I give you twenty grand? That's probably your number you got to make, right? Because mm-hmm. you're not going to fucking overshoot me. I already fucking you know, right. did my research. I said I'll give you twenty grand. Let me have the whole car though. Okay. I want the whole car. I want to be able to control the advertisements on the car. Okay. And how many logos fit on a car? So you have the hood. You have the quarter panels, you have the side panels, you have the trunk, mm-hmm. you have Luke Pedagog, which is on the gas tank in the side right. <laughs> <laughs> what did Luke pay for that? What did Luke pay I for think, that? No, you know what's funny? Luke Luke gave ten thousand. Luke gave ten thousand for that. And uh not for, but the, Luke not was, for the gas tank. But Luke was very loosey goosey with it. I yeah. mean, he was it was like, dude, when I did a deal with Luke, I think it was like two in the morning. Yeah. You know? And I was just like I was like, Yeah, I can. And I think what, what Luke wanted was some written thing on there. Mm-hmm. And we actually, I believe, again. I could be wrong. Yeah. The car did race, and I do believe we put Luke's thing on the car. The problem was the location it was on. I don't think he was satisfied with. Yeah. And I think he came back to me and said, look, like, what the fuck? I want my money back. But also, Luke, I think, was on a bender when he did this deal with me. <laughs> so, like, I, I, I felt like it. So then I just was like, you know... You know, I was just like, whatever. But at uh, the end of the day, did I pay Luke back his money? Well, yeah, but his version of the story was that you told him the car was never... Like you decided not to do it with the car because of some but, issue. But no, 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 the car. And, and then you just never give him the ten grand back. We, you had to, no, you had to no, call no. you fucking twice a week for a no, year. No, 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 this, and then He did have to. Yeah, you, you bumped he, into him once, no. and he's a lot bigger than you. So you're like, oh, here's the ten grand, sir. I, I, by the way, I didn't bump into him. I didn't bump into him. Yeah, I made that. Like, I made oh, that take, part. Your, take the money, Luke. <laughs> Sorry, take the fucking money. No, I actually just we we put something on the car, I believe, for Luke, but yeah. it wasn't like in the real great spot. 
Yeah. And so um, basically, yeah, he came back and was like, hey, man, can I get some? And I think I just gave it to him. I fucked with him a little bit. Yeah. Because yeah. when people fucking fuck with me, I fuck with him back. So yeah, I, yeah. I stretched it out over time. I yeah. gave it to him in increments. No, he said he got it all back from me. He, he said he got it all back. Wait a minute. He got it all back. He, he said he yeah, got it all back. he got in the fucking car. He this, cost me money. Said, <laughs> Luke, you owe me fucking money because I put real estate on there. There's a situation like this. Hey, Bob, here, here's 10 grand. Four days later, Bob says the race isn't happening. So Luke goes, could I have the money back? And it yeah. took him a year to actually get the money back. Nope. Incorrect. <laughs> he gave me the fucking money. The, we put something on yeah. the car. It was it ran and then after it ran after it ran he wasn't satisfied yeah and he wanted a full refund and I was like uh, uh, really okay but so, I, I but I but, but it, you know me it's like <laughs> I gave it I gave it back to him but it was over time so when we talk about like mentoring and just like leading by example That's and an shit. interesting <laughs> segue right there well one of the things that I, it's not the segue we're staying on this actually so but basically wait, I want to finish this point well, John well, yeah. I want to finish this point I want to finish this point so what I do is I take I got the blank car yeah and then what I do is I take the the the, the blank car and now mm. when you're like a little race car driver with a small brand yeah and you're only thing to really do is fox sports puts this on too yeah. if i can take that car i can 10x the value with the advertising dollars yeah. because i can now go to and say well it's on fox but it's also on bob menary's tiktoks it's on that so i can jump the price higher yeah so i take the car for 20 and i flip it for like 60 and then you also and put then it on your runs, social media. i take 40 i put it on social media everybody's happy except for pedigal yeah yeah <laughs> so let, let's talk about that though on that social media aspect so do you when we talk about just the monetization of Bob Menery, okay, this is a great example on, on how you work the NASCAR thing. It makes sense. How about just like somebody contacts you? Hey, man, promote my gambling app. Hey, man, like you just make up numbers? Do you Bro, have... I'm from the streets of Lawrence. Yeah. I'm from fucking the ghetto in Massachusetts, right? Yeah. So no matter if I made $100,000 an episode, which mm -hmm. was at one point I was making at one point, mm -hmm. you know, $100,000 every time I sat down, basically, I think, mm -hmm. towards the end, and then the money got big and was cut yep. to 40000 an episode now to 15000 I'll pick up scraps. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. I just like, I, I don't care. Mm -hmm. A, I like to help small businesses if I can. Yeah. I'll do deals for somebody for fucking 500 bucks sometimes, even in my life. Yeah. Right now, I'll give a deal for 2000 I don't give a fuck. I just. And what need, does that look like? Somebody comes to you and say, hey, man, I, I fucking love your shit. My kid's been watching it forever. I've been watching you forever. What would it take you to put my hot dog stand up on your fucking thing for a day? My question is usually like, how rich are you? Yeah. Okay. Just how, make it like relative. How, how rich are you? Like, mm -hmm. what do you do? Don't fuck with me. Don't lie to me. Okay. You make money. You got fucking ten million dollars in the bank. Mm -hmm. You a fucking school teacher. What do you fucking right. whatever? Right. And then I'll just make up a number. There's okay. no set thing. Yeah. And then that. And then that's that. And, and then it's just kind of like on a handshake, kind of the word kind of thing. I don't right? usually do contracts. Yeah. I don't usually like you know whatever. I mean, obviously, what I do is then it gets taken to my guys and they wires it to my fucking LLC and then yeah. fucking all that shit happens. It's just so touchy right now, man. Because every once in a while I'll see you put you just had something up the other fucking day about a gambling, uh, some sports handicapping pick kind of thing, and it's yeah. like. I'm, I'm a, I I think I knew who those guys were that, that did that with you, and I kind of have an idea what they paid you. It's just so touchy because your brand is so freaking big when you do shit like that versus you might have your own gambling deal at some point. Yeah, like, sure. Right? I, think like, that, I think that, I think that, that like, you know, it goes back to do I want to build this into a huge business or am mm -hmm. I cool with just making a couple million, three million, four million, five million a year? Yeah. Am I cool? Like, bro, I don't need a lot. Is that a dumb way to think? Probably. You know, is yeah. there ways to bring in infrastructure around Bob? Uh, yeah. Haven't really been able to do it yet because I am, I am very, very a control freak. Yeah. Which is one of my flaws. Right. So, you know, for me to let people in. Yeah. And could I have taken this thing at the right time when I was peak, peak, peak yeah. to another level? Fucking absolutely. I made yeah. a lot of mistakes when it comes to that. But I also just don't care. Yeah. I don't, I don't, bro, I don't care if I live in one bedroom apartment. Right. And with fucking no, I don't give a fuck yeah. about money. It does not fucking matter to me. Do you ever feel like you're going to run out of content or do you feel you're, you're pretty confident you're going to be funny forever? Not even funny. I'll just figure it out, bro. I'm a fucking shark. Okay. I'm a shark, bro. I'll figure shit out always. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think that I don't have a mentality ever to give up. What I do is if I do get in that point where I'm a little yeah. burnt out, right? which has happened, like I got burnt out after because I put my all into full send. Yeah. And then after that pulled the plug, I was just burnt out. Yeah. And I just went away. But look at your brand though, bro. So when you're like, say, you say fast forward 10 years, you're in your mid forties and we're going to be a sports broadcaster on uh, on, on national television. Okay. I'll, I'll settle down and I'll be like Baltimore Orioles versus the Red Sox. I'll be fat. I'll have a fucking beer belly. I'll be like, in bottom of the nine, two down. I used to talk about hookers and blow, and now I'm here in the, uh, you know, in the booth at 50 years old. 
That's you know? my retirement plan. Go work as a <laughs> national broadcaster. That's perfect. You know, it, it, it's something to be said for that, though, man. Like with, with with your fame as it is right now, you know, you you talk about you know Nelk with Happy Dad. You talk about Ryan Reynolds with Aviator Gin. You talk about whoever those fucking tequila yeah. guys are. You know what I mean? You, you know, that's the home run. And that's and why I, that's why I want you. Yeah, that's well, where I want you. And I'm in a bunch of venture deals, bro. And a lot of them are celebrity involved. I mean, I'm in a big one with Kevin Garnett. I'm in a a couple of big ones with Aaron Rodgers, you know what I mean? And both those guys are set, man. And for them, it'll be like fucking gravy on the fucking, you know, on the turkey for them. If, if we give, but it's like, it's like shit, man. It's a couple of these other ones I'm in are maybe some smaller celebrities that, hey, if we fucking hit a home run, that's going to be fucking life changing and generational wealth changing for them. But they are fucking long shots. You just don't know which ones are going to fucking hit. Yeah. Um. So are, do people bring you in, Bob, on deals where they're giving you equity in their of company? Of course. That's a lot of yeah. the thing. I always do a ma- I usually try and do a mix of uh, cash equity. Yeah. Right? So I always take a mix of cash and equity uh, or okay. try to. Um, oh, they'll pay you cash to promote it and then give no, you equity? No, it's just usually like, all right, hey, I want, you know, 5% of this fucking whole operation and I mm-hmm. want like 100 grand cash. Gotcha. Because I don't like, you know, I always... It and then what will they? And what, you'll do what for that? What would be an example for that you're going to help promote it on in the contract? Media? What it says? It says mm-hmm. you let Bob be Bob. Okay, that's yeah. it. No, you know, it's basically like I don't have. I'm telling you, I don't do a lot of shit. Where yeah. when you tell me if I do a deal with you, yeah, and you give me set deliverables and you make it hard, right, for me to fucking like if you tell me, all right, hey Bob, we need two stories a week, three fucking things, yep. this, 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 and this. Yeah, I'm just like so turned off. Yeah. And it, which is, but it's also like that's how a business is run. Yeah, yeah. I will go above it for a motherfucker that just fucking wires me fucking ten grand. Mm-hmm. Says Bob, we fucking trust you. Run the fucking. Sh- I will fucking murder it. Hey everybody, I want to invite you to check out two thousand percent raise dot com. Here you could buy the two thousand percent raise book, also available on Amazon. You could check out two thousand percent raise merchandise, as well as two thousand percent raise special events that might be coming to your city soon. Last but not least, you can enroll in the 2000% Raise curriculum, which will help you on your entrepreneurial journey. Don't forget to follow at John Sarasani on Instagram and TikTok as well. Thank you for being a supporter of the show. You know, it's so funny, man. So I had a gambling um, app contact me that wanted me to promote it on my social media stories. And uh, I'm involved as a venture capitalist in a couple gambling apps, and this was not one of them. So I'm like, because normally I would just do the shit like that for free if I like the fucking product. And they offered me 1500 bucks. So I put it up as a fucking 1500 bucks for John. It's hilarious. Well, <laughs> well, dude, well, if you look at my social media, that's probably what it should cost. I don't know. But so I put it fucking up there. And it's like, it didn't fucking perform well. And I like felt so fucking bad. Uh, I, I, I'm like, I, dude, I didn't want to take their fucking money. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Yeah. That's that's the that's the reason a lot of them don't. Okay. I think that a lot of companies that spend on influencers that advertise through Instagram and different things yep. don't work. Okay. I think that there's certain ones like the one we did with Com- Commonwealth, the uh-huh. uh, horse gambling app, worked really fucking well. Okay. I got them like fucking. But you know what Commonwealth did and uh-huh. why it worked well? Why? They said, "Hey Bob, here's the fucking money. Yeah, we're whatever. not going to even tell you what to do. Do whatever the we fuck have you the want. Kentucky Derby coming up. Just fucking mm-hmm. run with it. Yeah. I got them a fuck ton of downloads." I got them a fuck ton of shit, and they yeah. and guess what happened? I mean, we won the what? Kentucky Derby. They own yeah. the horse, yeah. and we 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 crushed it for them. Um, and but there's certain ones that just for the majority, I'd say a lot of our stuff didn't really doesn't really perform as well as people think. But the the reason why is this is because a lot of these companies do one offs, right? And so when you do a one off, you got to really drill it in somebody's brain, right? Over and over and over. That's why these yeah. like people that buy one story, two like they. they Everybody laughs at that. Nobody yeah. really clicks because they don't fucking. Yeah. It's not going to work. You got to really. That's why you take, you know, certain companies you believe in, you take equity in. Right. Because then you're in it for the long haul. Yeah, that's what it is. The These part one-offs of the deal. don't fucking work with influencers. Yeah. Well, and then it's like how many brands will, will try to tie it to an influencer and give you a little bit of money and then say they'll give you some kind of promo code for 20% off with yeah. your name or something. The gambling and then deals. It's even, then it's even fucking worse. Well, the, the funny thing is with, with my audience is the biggest. Mm-hmm thing that we could hit mm-hmm. that we haven't yet and yeah. i'm talking to portnoy i've talking to DraftKings. kings yeah. is one of my founder DraftKings, one of my dear friends portnoy and i obviously had our past but you know i mean i'm sitting on a fucking 90 percent of my people that follow me gamble yeah and we've never really done a real gambling deal partnership because a lot of the the times these companies want to a DraftKings, publicly traded companies right now don't want to touch me 
Okay. You know, it's yeah. just too. It's too. I'm too much of a danger to. Yep. Have too much of a high risk to fucking fuck with DraftKings. DraftKings. Yep. Matt's like, dude, I love you, dude. Right. We can't touch you. Right. You're too. Fu- we can't have three a.m. You crying about your girl and fucking saying. Fuck. <laughs> you know, we just can't. We can't have that. So, but a lot yeah. of these deals are set up basically. What they want to do is a, a CPA cost mm-hmm. per acquisition. Okay. So, like, you know, hey, Bob, here's a deal. You know, it, it, and it changed too, like, Bob. Every person that uses your code will give you two hundred dollars, right. right? Well, here's the problem with that, guys, mm-hmm. is that you know I use my code, right? Mm-hmm. But I could bring you John Sarasani, mm-hmm. who doesn't give a fuck about a code, right? Goes to your site because he fucks at me, mm-hmm. signs up without the code, and loses a million fucking dollars. Yeah, exactly. So you know there was ways to look at all right. Well, yeah, which sounds like the devil, but a lot of these deals are set up, and now they're not so much set up in the United States. But a lot of the offshore deals where you're getting a percentage of losses. Yeah. Which is something where I don't know all the legal shit around that, but. Yeah. And then, but also then you got to trust those motherfuckers too. That they're giving you the right information. You have to have the right tracking system in place. You have to have, um, you know. Just such a shady fucking, it's it's crazy that it's legal now, right? It's such a fucking shady. It is going to be the downfall of fucking this country. Yeah. Which I'm a gambler. I lost a million dollars last year gambling. I don't really gamble that much anymore. (laughs) But, um, you know, I. It's it's just in the but the but the crazy thing is there's still room to do deals like that because as states roll out, you look at for instance when Massachusetts went live, yep, they need a presence in Mass mm-hmm. and they need somebody there on the ground hammering signups and all that shit, right? And so that's why right right now my big baby is figuring out a uh, a good sports gambling deal, yep. That's yeah. what it is. And for everyone that And I never really went offshore. Offshore yeah. because I didn't I didn't believe because I believe eventually the feds are coming in and fucking shutting that shit down and yep. there's a lot of comp- you see these guys doing you know. Yeah. I'm not saying I'd never went offshore. I've done it like a quick little fuck but I never really like done deep you know right. a deep partnership with anybody offshore. Well, and the big dogs I, I think for our audience for me to share too as a bunch of capitalists is is just understanding that FanDuel and Giraffe Kings, Bad MGM you know why they're so big? You know why they're so much bigger than everyone else right now? Is because they had a freaking head start. They already had this base of players, either from their casinos or in DraftKings and FanDuel space, from the, the, they had a database of fantasy players. Right? right. Fantasy was legal for years and they were freaking doing it. Now we do gambling. Okay, we got these people that already have that general interest. And um, and uh, all they're doing is gobbling up the littler guys. I'm in two deals right now, man. One of them's like a parlay kind of prop bet kind of thing. It's called Moneyline app. Pretty fucking cool. Hopefully it takes off. They're out of Atlanta. And they're getting some good progress. What's going to happen? Hopefully FanDuel or DraftKings comes and buys us. Yeah, that's practice. what they just do with PointsBet. Yeah. I think PointsBet just got bought out, I believe, recently. So, PointsBet was uh, came on the map, I think, 500 million bucks. And they're paying huge multiples, and they're losing fucking money. The reason they're doing it is because they're looking at the long game, man. Okay, for the next 50 years, if I could make you a loyal to this, I will give you $800 of free bets to get you in. Yeah. But, but here's the problem, though. Everyone's giving away that shit, so, so you got these degenerate gamblers yeah. just going to all of them now. You know, it's funny, too. They pay these, which they realize, too, because I talked to, uh, I'm not going to name names, but I talked mm-hmm. to a couple guys that are high, high up, obviously, mm-hmm. at these companies, and they've paid, you know, these Jamie Foxes, Kevin Hart's. I'm using them as examples, mm-hmm. not saying that, but they don't really... They paid him a fuck ton of money and it didn't really transform yep. to numbers, you know. Just That's right. By, so. Well, and, and there's boots on the ground too, just flying in here today. I'm sitting in first class on United and two seats behind me is a woman that was my casino host at Rivers Casino in, in Des Plaines, Illinois, outside of Chicago. Hey, what are you doing here? She now works for DraftKings. DraftKings was going to recruiting the good freaking casino. Yeah, they host. have people on the it's ground cool. everywhere. Yeah. When we go to but when Bot Mass went live. You have everybody with their name tags on. They send out their little people to bars yeah. and do all that shit. But one of the greatest deals I've ever had uh, that that was fun was um, my buddy. Uh, I don't eh, sure. I'll say his name. Sam Kiki, fucking okay. very smart guy. All right. This was the deal that I probably got the most money for money money for and didn't have to do a thing. Yeah. Um, so Sam calls me up and Sam's like basically like, yo, we want to build out these uh, slot machines digitally. We can do this in forty states right now. We can build and devise your own slot machine, uh, whatever. But yeah. it's not going to be ready till the Bob Mentory slot machine. Yeah, we're going to build out our own, de- like you know, because there's different ways to do it. You can do, they said we can do like a fucking two hundred thousand dollar one that would take to build, or we could do a five million dollar would take to build, but like really crazy graphics, like okay. Temple Run, like fucking do it crazy. Yeah. So <laughs> the way we negotiated the deal was, I said, okay, well, how long is this going to take to do and all that stuff? So they said, well, we got to raise some money and whatnot. I said, mm. okay, well, here's the deal, I'll be yours. I'll take 
uh, a month of, I think two months or something of that of I- exclusivity yep. where I won't do anything in the gaming space with I slots, uh, yep. slot machines. And, you know, give me $300,000. Yep. And, uh, you know, but it's non refundable if you guys can't raise the money, whatever. So they gave me 300 grand. And I'm not sure that they didn't raise the money, but it just didn't end up happening. And Sam's a dear friend of mine. And uh, this is why I love Sam. I called Sam at the end of two months and it was basically like, hey, like, right. Time's up. Yeah. You know, and never went anywhere. And it didn't not go anywhere. And Sam has so many different amazing businesses, but yeah. he basically was like, uh, the man about it. Okay. You know, he was just like, yeah, the 300 grand's yours, brother. Couldn't, but, but what I said is this I'm like, dude, I don't like taking 300 grand for doing nothing. Right. I don't fucking like that. I'm like, bro, I'm yours. Yeah. For you to make that that easy and not ask for that money back and whatever, right. I'm like, bro, I got your fucking back. Yeah. You know, like, I got your back for whatever. Thank you. Sucks it didn't work out, but I'm fucking here for you. Whatever the fuck you need, you call me. Yep. Whatever I can do with my shit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, that's interesting, man. So, so he was raising it probably from investors, I would imagine. I, I've been in those scenarios. Or they just or they just were like, Bob, fuck that. We don't, you know. Just, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just, we're going to go a different direction. No, but Sam Kiki is a fucking genius. He's a okay. fucking genius. You got to meet him sometime. He's, yeah. Oh, I got to introduce you to Sam. Okay. He's a fucking killer. All right. Fucking killer. I don't know. So, man, you, you reside primarily in Boston, correct? I reside in Boston. Yeah, but you're out in L.A. quite a bit, too. Well, now that I have this beautiful place that I live in, it's amazing. <laughs> now that you have access to my condo. Now I have access to your what condo. What about Bob? Uh, no, yeah, I, I live in Boston, but with my, I like to travel a lot, too. Yeah. Is it night and day for you, though, bro? So you're walking around the streets of Boston, which I've done with you. What's that area we're hanging out in? We were the North End. Yeah, we're North End, but before we did, that's the Italian area, right? Seaport is where I live, that area. Okay, okay. Just, you know, every block, people stop it and, hey, that's Bob Monterey, get a picture, high five, picture, high five. Mm-hmm. And, We've had some celebrities on this this show right here before, and uh, they, they've talked about how in L.A., it's like everyone's a fucking celebrity. And you could actually, you, you feel like you could walk around here and not be noticed. It's when they leave L.A. 1,000%. Uh, yeah, so, so which do you like better? I'm not a celebrity at all. I fucking hate L.A. Okay. I fucking hate L.A. Because no, no one stops to take a picture or because you hate no, L.A.? No, no, not at all. I had some yeah. really, really traumatic experiences here. Really? In my life. Very traumatic. This is where okay. I hit rock bottom. I was in, living in my car. Mm-hmm. I had developed a really bad crystal meth fucking problem, which we talked about Jesus. on the show yep. back in the day, which I've never done coke or anything like that in fucking eight years mm-hmm. um but yeah i mean la just has bad vibes it has a bad toxic relationships here and all that yep. stuff that's the reason i don't like it here you're right about the point where you just said la you walk around and nobody really bothers you anymore yep. i don't I, I i never any celebrity i think i mean i guess if you're justin bieber like yeah. you're a pain in the ass but right. i'm the perfect middle ground yep i know that when i go out mm-hmm. outside of even la anywhere right. in the country yep yeah i know that if i probably walk from a to b i'm gonna be stopped Yep. Whether it be, you know, a hey big fan, can I get a picture? You're the man, fuck you. <laughs> hey, no boys, what you know, like I'm gonna I'm gonna get that everywhere I go. And oh. I fucking love it. I and I'm gonna vouch for him. He he's telling the damn truth on that. I'm gonna tell that you don't fucking remember this story, but we're at the fucking NFL draft in Kansas City, okay? We had two freaking passes that he worked out with the NFL prior, and so we ended up having a third person coming with us out of a clear blue sky. Someone's girlfriend came into town and they needed we did we only had two passes and now there was three of us and uh we're gonna that was fucking figure it out when we get there well as we're walking up i'm just trying to smooth talk to people hey okay you know this is bob Mannery, blah, blah, blah. no one knows who the fuck i'm talking about yeah. nobody fucking knew him and all this shit everyone's being very nice but you sorry you got two passes you can't get in mm-hmm. I ended up fucking going and ended up sneaking a pass back and took a fucking hour to figure this out you got that done by the way good job i, I did get it done i did get it done now but here's the here's the fucked up thing as soon as he fucking came in, he can't walk more than five feet without someone giving me a fucking high five. And I must have went to 50 different fucking people asking them if they knew who Bob Mattery was. Then once they saw you walking, everyone's coming up and taking a fucking picture. Dude, I mean, you know, I tell you why people, I think it be- goes back to that shit. Why mm-hmm. I'm so fucking like real on my shit is mm-hmm. like the most, the, when people come up to me, that what they say is, dude, I just love how fucking real you are in your shit. Like yeah. what I don't realize sometimes because I forget is actually how much reach I do have. Like yep. I do, I forget that when I go, cry about a relationship like a little pussy on the internet at two in the morning like a little bitch uh that i am for doing that you know i forget that the next morning i have to wake up and i have to walk around an airport and people know about it yeah and it's just like then i'm like fuck i i'm like fuck they're gonna they they always come up to me they're always like you all right and i'm like what oh shit yeah (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, I'm good, man. I'm, I'm okay. I sw- I'm good. <laughs> well, and Bob, it's, it's for reasons like this and experiences like this why, why I don't bring up little things like what I'm going to bring up right now. Okay? You can bring up whatever you want, Remember brother. I talked about those two kids with the, the bear kids and we ended up not... Re- uh, they made the out all right. I paid them fucking money, and I but I love them. That's fine. But but what you haven't asked Bob is how, how they got home the next day while Bob was asleep. Mm-hmm. Somebody had to pay for their airline tickets, and it was supposed to get reimbursed. But mm-hmm. I, I don't ask for the money because mm-hmm. we do things like the NFL draft and had a great fucking experience. Yeah, you've got you've got you've gotten fucked twice. You fell for the NASCAR trap, and now the fucking flight home. No, John. I mean that's a hey, John. But, but John. I walked around VIP at the NFL draft with everyone high fiving me. We were like literally in front of the stage while they were announcing. Yeah, that no, was John. Funny. John. And by the way, that's it's only like sixteen hundred and forty three dollars and fifty four cents. Whatever, whatever it is. Yeah, I mean, I think that I think that me and John's uh, to to just you know make a point on that. I think that John and I, uh, when you're a partner with somebody uh, and you partner up with somebody, I think that you're willing to, you know, I, I have a very like I said, when I go out, it's a lot, it's hectic, and sometimes I need my sleep. And uh, I was asleep that day, and uh, I thought sleep. I had taken care of the flights for the kids, and I didn't. <laughs> but luckily, my partner, yeah. who uh, you know I love to promote on the internet and support, uh, was there and uh, sent them home. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, on just a plane. left them in your house for a couple of days. But, but also, too, in in their defense, I gave, I gave him some cash flow. Though. I gave him two grand to come. No, that was fine. I, I got him a nice there. hotel, the Envoy, set them up. I just felt yeah. bad though because I want to sit down there. It's such a great story what they how they that whole story is amazing yeah and i just feel bad because i just sometimes get a little i try to make episodes not like this every time i right. love one-on-ones but sometimes we have the DoorDash driver there yeah part yeah. of the interview and i was just like it was so chaotic it was so hard to edit yeah it just was messy and i said you know what scrap it well there's like six different mics too and you had two of them. the people were in the background behind the cameras talking and shit. Was i threw you out remember that you throw me out. Yeah, I think didn't I throw somebody out? Remember, I was like in, and I'm like, guys, shut the like, as I'm very. Oh no, that's when we started. You cleared the fucking room. I cleared the yes. room. I was like, you know I was what? Stuck I can't with these strangers because I had because I I like to have a party environment going on always, but then I it was too much noise, and I was just like, these poor kids just flew in. They just got fucking mauled by a grizzly bear. Yeah, and we it were was all, an awesome story though. That's awesome what you get one. when you get the Bob Menner experience. I'm not perfect, man. Yeah, but he, he invites the DoorDash guy to sit down. The DoorDash guy's bringing beer and the, or whatever he was bringing. They go, just come on in. This guy made himself comfortable. This big African American guy just starts talking, making jokes. I mean, he, dude, he, he was, was his house. He he was treating your apartment how you treat mine. He acted like he owned the fucking yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I I mean, I feel like I kind of this is my place now. <laughs> yeah, but exactly. uh, no, he came to the door. The funny stories of the bear guys is again ADH Bob. Instead of having a great interview with me and the mm-hmm. two people, I see me too. I like to get people involved. So he came yeah. to the door, he rang the thing. Yeah, it was like it was late at night. He was probably done his shift. I'm like, hey man, you want to just have you ever done a podcast before? I'm like, come on in. <laughs> and he loved it. And you know what's funny? He texted me the other day. He's like, dude, I had so much fucking fun. Mm-hmm. That made my fucking day. I I, I told him I gave dude, him that fu- was a blast. I man. told him I gave him five hundred bucks. I ended up giving a hundred. He's asking for the other four. I said, listen. <laughs> You got the experience of a lifetime. You, know, you, you ain't getting that money. A uh, 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 hundred's enough. Dude, that's some classic you know? fucking shit right No, that there. was I do want to sit down with those kids again. We should actually try and get them on the on the show again, the four of us, because I think it could have been a little bit organized a little better. So Bob, let me ask you something. Do you think it's a, a worse look for me hanging out with Billy McFarland or hanging out with you? Which is a worse oh, look which is a worse look? Well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Uh first of all, Billy McFarland, I don't know anything about. The only thing I know about is Billy McFarland was involved in the Fire Festival, right? Yep. To your point, which I heard you say on social media, is mm. Billy McFarland mm. did his time? Yep. Let's give him another chance. Yep. So I, it's like back to the cancel culture thing, right? You're going to cancel mm. somebody forever. There are people that should be canceled forever. Yep. We had the discussion with Burt Kreischer. Mm. R. Kelly, gone. Yep. Bill yep. Cosby, gone. Right. I, well, actually, no, he's on tour, I guess. Who but, is? Know, Bill Cosby's on tour? I guess he's out of jail. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, he's out of good lawyers. Jesus. Think, maybe Marty Singer, I think, maybe did that. But, you know, I, I always believe that... I, I, I believe in so many different chances. So back to your mm. question is, who is better t- to associate yourself with? <laughs> I think that Bob Mentory is going to do 100 times more that Billy McFarlane will yeah, do for you. Yeah, and I'm just totally kidding. And I think that... I th- Oh, you're kidding? Well, I was saying it in a way because I because y- you've, you've expressed to me that I'm a respected venture capitalist and business guy Mc- and, and me- you, you've re- you've expressed to me hey just be careful and so i have some other celebrity friends that have said something similar but i could tell you i don't want to make a big big billy before the not conversation but i was i was trying to make it about like i was, I was trying to make a jab at you there dude buddy. i have nothing I was trying wrong. to make a jab at you there buddy. yeah see i'm very good at defending these things yeah, so yeah. i think that billy mcfarland is fine in my opinion i think yeah. that here's the deal if he can make it up 
Yeah. And make a great thing again and do it right. I'm fine. Like, you know, that's what he's trying to fucking do. And then, that's what people don't realize. He owes twenty six million dollars to fucking investors. The only way is he ain't going to fucking do that working at Dunkin Donuts. He's going to need to fucking do something. Yeah, but what about the people? Back. No. So that's the fucking thing. We'll just talk about this real quick. He doesn't owe anybody, any people fucking money. All the people that bought tickets and all that shit, all they all got their money back from the cr fucking credit card companies. They all fucking got their chargebacks. And they all got their, everyone yeah. did? The people of the Bahamas got fucked. About 300 grand he owes to the people of the Bahamas, the workers. That's, that's, yeah, that's the worst. country. Fuck the <laughs> No, no, I love the Bahamas. I'm just kidding. That, that, that's probably the one that hurts the worst, that 300 grand that so he owes to the Bahamas. So he can't get 300,000 dollars back? He's working on it. He's working on it. He's, he's starting fresh. Well, I'll, I'll tell you fucking what, though. The investors, though, most of that $26 million came from, like, rich motherfuckers that go into deals like that, No one they might lose. If I was an investor on the fucking Fire, fire app, the Fire Festival... Yeah, because you funded it, the whole Fire Festival, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> if he ends up doing, getting restitution to pay them back, if, if one of my fucking venture pro projects that went... Like that two years ago, if 10 years from now I get a fucking call and say, hey, we're giving you back that 150 grand, I'll be like, deal. Let me ask this, John. Out of all, because you know this better than anybody else, yeah. you have, I want to talk to you too. I'm going to host this for a minute. I know you have a lot of different businesses, yeah. right? What is, how many of these things, when you're investing into mm -hmm. companies, right? Yep. So you invest in 100 different companies, say hypothetically. Yep. How many of them hit? So the rule of thumb with early stage venture capital is that of for every 10, you're going to assume that probably... Five of them go to zero, three of them you end up breaking even, and then two you want to be the home runs. Okay, but you could very well go over ten. You could very well them. go over ten. Yeah. So I'll give you. An How do you? Oh, I'll give you a fucking example. Like, all right. Keep so that I'm mic about, up there. I'm, yeah. in, I'm in about thirty different deals right now. All right, but one of them, like some of them, are a lot safer than others. So for instance, I was part of the investment group that bought the Newport Beach Marriott, which is now the Via Hotel. It's fucking awesome if you're ever in Orange County. Fucking awesome. I heard it sucks. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> you can't afford the rooms there, bro. I know, exactly. <laughs> Fuck um, you. It, it's fucking amazing. And <laughs> that one <laughs> that one is a safe investment. I'm pretty confident I'm going to be making fucking money on that for fucking years. Okay? And I'm not going to lose everything on that for sure. Are those checks in the mail that okay. just come in? They will be. We're still, this just was about a year and a half ago, so we're not at the distribution part. But yeah, I will expect the quarterly dividends as it goes. Okay. Yeah, once we get there, we just did a huge renovation project, so it's going to take a little bit. But then you got other ones that are more on the, the riskier side, like, like for instance here, o OSDB, all right? Online sports database. All right, my good friend Ryan Rotman started this company. Aaron Rodgers is on the founding team with him. And it's like an IMDB of sports. So what does that mean? All right, here's what that means. It's probably either gonna fucking hit huge or probably be zero. Yeah, like you know, one of the two. There's yeah. not going to be an enemy. You, 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 everyone. You're an actor. You're an actor. You're, you are an actor. You know what IMDb is? IMDb. You see your, my IMD picture? Go look at my IMD picture. And tell me if I'm an actor. Well, what's fucking funny is a lot of people outside of LA. Girls all know what IMDb is. A lot of guys don't really know IMDb outside of LA. You got to kind of a little bit be in the know. But if you're in LA and you don't know what IMDb is, you're a, you're kind of a fucking asshole. So explain what it is. It's basically a place where what you have your resume on there. Well, you you explain it. I mean, I think it's a play. Look at my IMDb picture right now. It looks like I have a black cock in my mouth. It, up? it looks like I have a black cock in my mouth. I don't, I don't change that because I, I don't give two shits about anything. Like, I'm very bad at, like, managing my brand. That's my IMDb page right there. Yeah. If you can see where we pull it up, it's awful. So. so IMDb was purchased by Amazon, but it started off as just this, you know, little company that was verifying. So, so the idea was that if I'm an actor... And I'm talking to some chick at the bar, and I say, hey, I was in fucking uh, Walk, of the, Walk in the Clouds in 1992 or something. I don't know why the fuck I said that movie. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, oh, bullshit you were. No, I was in a fucking Hostess Cupcake commercial. Oh, bullshit you were. You go to their IMDB page, it's and a it's resume. all fucking verified. Yeah. All right? So this does not exist for professional sports. All right? I could very well tell you right now. I played on the Cowboys in the year 2000. Yeah, you but would, you, you yeah. would have a hard time verifying that. All right, I'm going to break. I'm going to tell you why this business may work and may not work. I'll okay, break it down. Let's okay, just it. keep going. Let's hear it. So this. Well, and, and and here, by the way, Aaron Rodgers being involved. Ryan Ratman came up with the idea, but he was smart enough to get Aaron involved because we need that star power to go up. And it's early stages, but but hold know, on. So I'm yeah. fucking Ezekiel Elliott. I got one thing that just says Dallas Cowboys, mm -hmm. and it says what where you played college. But all, have all your stuff has all your contracts. But all that it, stuff it is also, Google accessible. It, but it's not verified. You don't know what, I mean, not really. So the only thing that exists that's kind of like it is Wikipedia, but Wikipedia could be changed by the general public. So your There's target audience is, your, your target audience is females 
across America who may be duped that you're <laughs> that you're not that you're not fucking a, a real NFL player. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's your target audience. Yeah, that's what we're going for, Bob. That, that's why IMDb is worth like three and a half billion right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I love that's it. Because that's what we're looking for. That's funny as shit. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah. that's that's like an example, right? And I'm, I'm in a few other ones like that. I'm in one called. Uh, Another one is uh, the Gaming Society, which Kevin Garnett is is a part of. Um, same person that was part of the founding team at uh, Players Tribune with Derek Jeter started this. And yep. it's a gambling company that uh, focuses on on women. Like, okay, bet on women is is the thing. And you know, and what's that? What's our idea behind it? Our idea behind it is that all right, eventually, uh, DraftKings and and um, and um, you know, FanDuel are going to start acquiring everybody. Okay, yeah. Well, here's this company over here that actually Has is these. focusing on WNBA and yeah. Kevin Garner. This would be good. Yeah. Good to have as our portfolio. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So um, yeah. You know, you know, we'll see. We'll see. You know, if if all of them if all of them are home runs, uh, I'll be a pretty smart fucking guy. But. That's it. Lo, lo, it's, it reminds me of Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Las Vegas. And by the way, uh, me and you decided to what what make sure we clip this part too mm -hmm. because I want to get this out there to our people because me and you made a declaration on the internet that you know you're a very good or he claims even though i think he came in last place in the blackjack tournament yeah right but he claims he's a very good blackjack player and he's a very good craps player actually roddy white of the atlantic falcons atlanta falcon atlanta falcons atlanta falcons came in last place i came in second to last place. okay yeah, because you play aggressive or just yeah, got bad hands uh you had to play aggressive blackjack tournaments we won't get into all that but go yeah ahead. so basically you know john and i decided uh to because I what I like to do is bring people out my followers to different events we did with the Kentucky Derby mm -hmm. I mean the kid had the experience of a lifetime brought him yep. out there so me and John decided that we are going to do a take a couple of maybe one of your people one of my people yep. to a Vegas experience with Bob Mentory and a yep. guy who knows how to play blackjack exactly. so you know he can handle you on the tables i'll take you out get zapped hopefully get you laid you know that's what i'm good at what i'll do is i'll give you when you meet a girl i'll give you my instagram page you can pretend it's yours i don't uh, know if you should be saying the uh getting laid piece if you look at the comments on that reel right now a lot of them are like hey man i'm married with two kids would like to get away and i'm sure their wives are reading this shit so uh, yeah yeah what happens in vegas stays in vegas yeah, but no exactly. at the end of the day uh, me and john are going to do a vegas giveaway we mm. kind of set a target date that we're going to do but again with me and my brand, like What's I said, brand? it's it's going to happen. We got to figure out a date that we want to do, but I think that'd be cool if we did that. Yeah, no, I definitely. And we think did. So. We'll pay for their flights. Yeah, coach though. Let's send a coach. Let's not do first class. <laughs> let's just pick people that live in like Henderson. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, you're next to the Red <laughs> we're, Rock. We're actually going to stay at your house. Yeah. Um, but so no, we'll, we'll pick a couple people to go, mm -hmm. and me and you will take them out, and we'll yeah. you know we'll do a big dinner out, hit do the a, tables, hit the tables, maybe give a little like maybe give like a thousand bucks to yep. play with each or something like that, and. Yep. Uh, and bring them out and then but we need something see this is the thing if we're going to give the people we need something in return so i think that yeah. what they have to do is they'd have to fuck with both of us okay so they have to follow your shit okay they'd have to follow my shit yeah and they'd have to fucking do something that we're going to figure out yep. but me and john are putting together a really really cool vegas uh 48 hour uh you know total all exclusive ex expenses paid yep. trip to vegas yep. and yep. i think that should be one of many okay i'm done i'm I in think, yeah. i'm in yeah, man. Because John pretends that he works a lot, but he's at the point now where he's made a lot of money and he's in a lot of different business. He doesn't have to work that much. There's a famous saying by Thoreau. It says, um, um, everybody's so busy, as are the ants. The question is, what are you so busy doing? And I wake up every morning, I'm checking my fucking emails, I'm doing all this shit around my house, and I'm like, wait, why the fuck am I fucking doing all this shit? I don't need to do any of this shit. Yeah, Just but you're so, hungry. So fuck out, man. You're hungry. You gotta, you gotta stay. You know, I think you're doing the right thing. I think that you have a lot of. You've grown massively. I mean, credit to you too. And what I like about John is John is just relentless. Mm -hmm. John will just post and post, and he's very like. I think what's good about you is you understand when to like. You call me and you're like, hey man, do you think this is a good idea? Because mm -hmm. you know how to find people that are smart at what they do. Yep. And ask their opinion and not be afraid to think you know it all or fucking. That's what I think attracts me the most to you and you're an overall just fucking great dude you know when i said i'm coming to la yeah. and i needed a spot you were just like right you know, boom i don't think the spot's gonna exist anymore after you saw your room and how <laughs> fucked exactly. up i made it you know there was like a, one request john's like stay out of that room bro john's like don't sleep in that room there's like two used Fuck. condoms in there and uh <laughs> And, and like, you know, I haven't been here in a while. I don't know which mess is mine and which is his. I'm like, dude, wait, did I leave that pile of shit on the floor or did you? Oh, you did, John. Of course I did. Yeah, I, yeah. I would have left a pile of shit. I, on the I knew floor. he never would know. So, um, <laughs> but do you, do you enjoy the, why Chicago? 
Yeah. Why do you live in Chicago? You know, man, that's where I'm just from, bro. I'm born and raised there. I grew up in the suburbs, uh, played football at Notre Dame, then I tra transferred to Northwestern. I'm just a Midwest dude. I will say, though, man, buying this place in L.A. has rejuvenated me. So many people frown upon L.A., and, and I have a theory, okay? I have a theory. A lot of people that have experienced L.A. in a bad way did it at a younger age, and maybe we're still like kind of grinding, looking for success. And you find out how many people out here are fucking full of shit. Everyone is just full of fucking shit. Everyone's liars, yes. right? Yes. But if you come out here as a successful business person, which I did, the other successful people gravitate towards you because they could recognize you're not full of shit like everyone fucking else. But nobody's and the fucking... circles start getting bigger and bigger and bigger fast, bro. But nobody's fast. there's very few people. I think this is a dirty town. Well, I'm a magnet to the good people then, bro. I got to tell you, dude, I, what was I doing five years ago? Fucking selling insurance in Chicago before I sold my fucking company. I'm self-deprecating there. But but OK, now I'm out here. This guy has some fucking mansion in fucking Bel Air. This person owns this liquor fucking company and it's generational wealth in Orange County. This is shit you don't fucking come across in Schaumburg, Illinois, where I'm from. Mm -hmm. All right. So for me, getting a place out here and being a part of this out here has been like, give me that pep in my step again, man. Mm -hmm. Like a pep well, in my I, step. I want to give you the pep too, because yeah. I think that what's important for yeah. guys like you too is you're seasoned veterans, you're smart, you're, you know, at an age where I'm guessing the people that follow you are. Mm -hmm probably around a certain age level you know i think what's important it's like anything else even sports or anything you want to skew younger yeah. and i think what's important for you that i could give you advice for and there's not much but mm -hmm. skewing younger is always important and i yeah. think with your knowledge that you have there's a lot of these young people like me not young but 35 yeah. years old that look up to a guy like you that mm -hmm. you could give advice to and i think yeah. by collabing with those people is going to be very beneficial to you. Well, dude, it's cracking me up. Now that I've been fucking around on social media a little bit more, I'm paying attention to shit. You got 20-somethings out there giving freaking business coaching advice, and they'll be like, no, no, they're not even rappers, and they'll have like tattoos up their fucking necks and shit. And I'm like, dude, who is this guy telling people how to fucking build a company and all this shit, giving mm -hmm. this advice? And kind of sucks, because everybody wants to get rich quick, I think, but, mm -hmm. you know. So what's was... the worst, uh, where, where, what, line of business are you most hesitant to put your money into what what business right now restaurants I, movies uh well i would say the thing i've really stayed away from and now it's kind of dying down is the whole nft thing hmm. i gave one guy Police. dude I'm, it's I'm, the biggest sham in the fucking bro, world but there's you know, one the panda one the, the k pie panda one was i think they were they they uh, four hundred dollars they they sold each unit for. Now it's worth thirty five hundred. Very rare. It's like point zero one percent of NFTs have succeeded. Yeah. Then you look at a couple other ones. Yeah, yeah. And you blame social media for all that shit, though, dude. Everyone like jumped on that bus so fucking fast, bro. Yeah, and a lot of people cashed up. Surprised the SEC. SEC, they're all coming in soon. Don't worry. Yeah. Everybody's gonna come in and start taking down people. It never really, you know. I don't like investing in things I can't explain. And no one was really ever ex able to explain well the whole NFT thing. Okay, you're going to set this price, and when they resell it to somebody else, you're going to get this commission. And then when they resell it to someone else after that, you're going to get a commission back to you as the originator. Yeah. And it's so like, well, well yeah. how, how, why the fuck are they going to keep reselling it? Well, because it's going to be a collector's well, item. Yeah, well, why? well, I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you yeah. why. And it's like based on this, the utility behind it. So basically mm -hmm. what they did with the MetaCard, which mm -hmm. I think is down... 60 70 percent right now mm. so what they did was they sold ten thousand units uh, and i was a part of the project yeah um it, they sold ten thousand units these cards that you could mm -hmm. buy digital cards and they sold i think i don't quote me twenty five hundred dollars each okay and they had ten thousand them sold and they made 25 million dollars in nine minutes wow yeah but that was when everyone was all that was when it was all but the utility behind it was the most important thing. So if you can provide the utility, that's great. If you can't, yeah. Doesn't well, what was the good. utility? What was the value proposition on that one? Um, the utility behind the full cent meta card was, uh, I guess, I think they're building uh, lounges. 
gyms. And you would get free memberships to those if you have this card? Memberships, lounges. I don't, I don't know where they're at with it right now. Okay, but that's involved. what you mean by utility. I'm, there's some kind of value. There's value to it. So, yeah. like, basically, here's the deal. If me and you did, hypothetically, an NFT, yeah. the John Sarasani and Bob Mentor NFT, and you're talking about the tent, where you, with the resell it and all that, so every time it's uh, 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 it's resold, right. you're but getting... But has there been a success? Right. So, so the idea would be that, okay, let's just say, okay, if you have the John Sarasani NFT, you get fucking you get half, come, pri- hey, good half price whoppers. We sell, nope, we sell 200 fucking NFTs, me and you. Mm-hmm. At five hundred dollars a piece, yep. right? So we take that money, okay, and then with those two hundred people that have that digital code, they could then be only exclusively brought out to the Vegas giveaway we do, right? The Kentucky Derby, yeah, fifty percent off our merch. So that that's basically what it was. Right? Has has anyone successful has anyone successfully executed this? I only know of one project. This been probably of course many but i know one project that is really good done a good job is the uh, king pie not pronounced the pandas yeah uh, which i said i think was like four hundred dollars originally bought and then it's selling trading at like 3500 right now <laughs> you know what the thing is man it sounds like a chicago nightclub because they card. Pr- actually provide the utility <laughs> it's, it sounds like a club promoter saying okay if you buy this card for 200 bucks you could half price yep. vip admission before midnight at all these nightclubs but it is that yeah but it is that right. it's just digitally exactly you know but it is a phase it's gone i mean it's all the all that shit's just it's yeah. done. And there's so many people that just rip so many people off. Yeah. You know, they just fucking took the cash. All these guys that had high, big, big influences that just fucking didn't do anything it's with It's called them. rugged them, John. It's called rugged. Yeah. That's the expression. Got it. So. Got it. So, Bob, you've, you've interviewed a lot of fucking big time people. Let's uh, let's move towards closure of this podcast. But who, who's the biggest? Yeah. Or who would you have the most fun interviewing? Maybe someone that you didn't plan on it being quite as interesting as it was. I had, I mean, I had fun with every single one of them, but. Of course, President of the United States, that's a bucket list thing. I mean, I can go and there's not a lot of people that say they sat down with the President of the United States. Awesome. Especially when Russia invaded Ukraine. Yeah. Like at that time. We were Trump's first interview. I think what we pulled off. So with Trump it, sat down with you guys. We were, we were, I executed the mission at three in the morning, fucked up in a hotel to get President Trump to sit down with us. Dana White, yep. before he gets all fucking pissed at me here, was the one who pushed it over the edge. But I was very, very gung ho. I had the Secretary of Defense and a high member of the CIA coming in, mm-hmm. and I three in the morning looked at Steve and five girls in the hotel room and said, "Get the fuck out of here, Steve. Let's get bigger. Wow. We're the biggest show in the world. Let's, wow. let's let's go aggressive for the president." Yeah. And I hit Donald Trump Jr. on Facetime like thirty times in a row. I awesome. hit my government guys. We hit him from all over. Dana was the one who pushed over the edge. Then Dana looks at me and says, "Is Bob fucked up right now? Let me call Kyle." Him yeah. and Kyle then took it from there and they executed it. I'll tell you what, man, I moved into the Trump Tower in Chicago in 2011 at our Homeowners Association Christmas party. Donald fucking was there. I think he happened to be in town, shows up to this thing. Now, at that point, he was just the host of Celebrity Apprentice. He wasn't in politics or fucking anything. And I got a picture with him. Mm-hmm. And never in a million years would I have thought five years later is the fucking president. It was a pretty cool encounter. Isn't that crazy? You know I mean? And yeah. I remember even watching the second, because Trump ran, wait, no, Trump, Oh, I'm, I'm dumb here. Trump had ran once, right? Or twice. 2016, he won. And then who, who, they who, lost in 2020. He lost in 2020, which was, who, he lost to Biden, Biden right? Yeah. Which was very surprising. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think when we were watching that, I didn't think that was going to happen. But mm-hmm. yeah, the only thing with Trump that was, that was off was the problem was the country just became toxic. Yeah. And for the right or wrong reasons, whatever you want to believe in, the country was just so divided. Yeah. You remember watching that and every time it was like a fucking riot in the streets and all that. Just, that, was, that was the only shitty well, part Well, there it. was a big thing, man. So, so being in Chicago, there was a big thing that happened in Wisconsin uh, with uh, that kid, uh, Kyle Rittenhouse, um, where a white 17-year-old showed up with a gun and then he got, while they were, while they were rioting, and he was still, his trial was still pending. And when Biden beat Trump... I was kind of thinking to myself, what a relief, because I thought Rittenhouse would probably end up getting off because I knew he was going to go self-defense. And whether he agreed with him or not, I was right on that. And uh, because legally, I don't think they were going to be able to get him for what they were charging him with. And it ended up being the case. And I just remember thinking to myself, the country is going to erupt if he gets not guilty on that damn thing. And if Trump is in office when this happens, you know what I mean? And, And sure enough, I will say. And then Biden was in office, and there wasn't a lot of mayhem. No, people, yeah. couldn't, people didn't have Trump to blame for right. it. Right. That's that's you that's, know what, that's I mean? what I'm talking about. The divide. The thing with me is the, uh, and I don't want to because my audience is very gun gun friendly. Yeah. But the whole school shit, the school shooting shit, mm-hmm. they got to figure that out. Yeah. That's got to be. I mean, I don't. What I would do, and I don't know if if you know if this makes sense, but if I was a parent in a small town, mm-hmm. I would see if 
and I don't know legal wise, but I would put everybody put in ten bucks mm -hmm. and hire a fucking retired guy to stand outside school. But it's probably something like you can't do that, right? It's probably by the state. <laughs> yeah. I would just hire some two guys because I'm not. I wouldn't. My kids going to school right now. I'd be freaking the fuck out every day. Yeah. I mean, it's been okay lately. There hasn't been really one, but you just know it's fucking coming, right? I mean, they they there was a point in time where it just didn't stop. Yeah. When was it felt like it? It was what? What's that? No, but with the, I mean, if somebody, if a guy walks into with a gun into school, you hear about it. They don't bury that under the rug. If somebody gets killed, if a guy walk, yeah. But sometimes we get sometimes we get desensitized to it too, man. There's so much shit now, you know, like freaking, it, it's sad. Go go watch the local news in Chicago. Oh yeah, on a Monday morning after a hot weekend in the fucking summer, and it's like Jesus. It, I, I can already tell you. I don't even have to see the news. It's going to be 20 plus murdered, yeah. 30 or 40 plus, depending on how hot it was that weekend, fucking um, shot. The Citizen. Every fucking weekend. Every fucking weekend. Download the Citizens app. The Citizens app is the thing that tells you. You have that? No. So the Citizens app is pretty cool. What it does is it takes your location, geo tracking, whatever, and it shows you within a radius all the things from just a guy breaking into the car, yeah. guy running around with a knife, fucking rifle, whatever. It tells you murder. Everything that happens it alerts you every time. I got to tell you, man, the one thing, man, as I, as I travel the world, especially in Europe, and you come across people and ask you where you're from, you say Chicago. You know what that used to get? It used to get, oh, yeah, Michael Jordan, or or sometimes people like, oh, good pizza, or maybe Al Capone even for the people that really were in the know. But usually it's Michael Jordan. Chicago's a great city. Chicago's a great city. Dude, I, I like know, Chicago. But, but now the freaking world news people don't bring up Michael Jordan. They bring up safety with shootings before well, Michael Jordan. I mean, that's what know, the world thinks of Chicago. That's what it is. You know, it's a rough Sucks, south man. side's tough, tough south the south side, right? So, oh, the south side and the west side is south where it's the south side and the west side, Chicago. At. But they don't report it like that. I mean, the people in London aren't like, oh, just this one section. They just think it's, you know, anyway. So give me one piece of advice before we end. I'm going to host the end of it. Yeah. What, uh, what, what, what's one piece of advice you can give somebody who wants to be John Sarasani? Learn your industry. Don't just go start a damn company, all right? No, not knowing shit about that industry, all right? You'll fail. And that's why so many companies fail. They jump into shit they don't know anything about. Get a job in the industry that you want to that you that you want to own a, a company in. Consider that job and your employment there as paid training for the company you're going to start in the future, and, and, and that's how you prosper. And that's how you prosper. And Bob, I'm going to ask you this last question, buddy, as we end the show. Don't fuck me, Bob. <laughs> by, by the way, <laughs> when are you I'll, leaving I'll leave my house? <laughs> Bob Mennery, okay. Let's see if you say something fucking different than what you said last time. Mm. Bob Mennery recommends. What movie to the two thousand percent raise audience? Ooh, uh, I would recommend. My, I mean, is that that's one of my favorite movies? It, it could be anything. Last time you Synecdoche, New York. Okay. Uh, by Philip Seymour Hoffman. Very dark. All right. It's it's basically how my brain works. Okay. Synecdoche, New York. Very you're you're gonna be. Yeah, it's like it's based on a play. It's that's that's one. I'm not gonna give you Catch Me If You Can. I'm gonna give you something deep. That's what you said last time. Catch Me If You go, Can. Go watch so Synecdoche, New York, with Philip Seymour Hoffman, who's one of the best actors ever. Awesome. And that wraps up another episode of Two Thousand Percent Rays. Thank you for listening. The best way to support our show is by leaving a rating or review on all platforms you listened on, and of course by following, liking, or subscribing. Visit us at 2000percentraise.com or at John Sarasani on TikTok and Instagram. And of course, my YouTube channel at John Sarasani's 2000% Raise. Find all the ways to follow today's guests in our show notes. Thank you for being a part of our entrepreneurial journey.